Saskatoon and a Century of Change by John Waddington. It's a new publication out. There's two volumes and he's with us today. And we talked a little bit about the, the photography, I guess, if you will, uh, the, the industry uh, and how that's evolved in Saskatoon over the past hundred years. Uh, the pictures that you have here from the local history room and uh, archives are, are actually fascinating when you look at some buildings are kind of the same and others uh, you can't imagine what was there in, in the past as opposed to what's there today. Uh, and as you mentioned, looking back at the history of, of phase two photography and what was there and on that site, uh, that kind of spurred you into doing this. Uh, what are some of the highlights that you found when you were looking at some of the old pictures and kind of superimposing or putting them side by side? on today's reality? Well, I think the biggest thing was that I found hardly any buildings that were the same or even recognizable within the city. It has gone through a phenomenal amount of architectural change over the last hundred odd years. Um, I've titled it Century of Change, but it's actually more than a century. Uh, but. Uh, the, the big boom of building in Saskatoon started in uh, 1910, basically ended with the crash in, in 1912. There was a phenomenal amount of building went on at that time. Uh, and so, some of the earlier times in the city, fire was a problem. There was a lot of big buildings, the Drinkle Block, for instance, that, uh, that were taken down by fire. Um, and uh, so that, of course, necessitated change back then. But even other than that, uh, I don't know how, how many times you walked by a construction site and said, gee, I wonder what used to be there, which is another thing that prodded me to do this book, because now you can look up what used to be there. But no, the change that's happened in the city, it's not like in Europe where you can walk down the street and see buildings that were built in the 1600s and they're still standing and they haven't changed hardly at all. Um, we have done a lot of change in this city. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the the crash, I guess, uh, the economic mm -hmm. downturn in mm -hmm. 1912. Uh, that led to a number of projects that were on track to be taller, maybe mm -hmm. reduced or canceled altogether. What were some mm -hmm. examples of those? Uh, well, the old Eaton's building, which is now the, uh, uh, the uh, Board of Education office, yep. Uh, it was originally planned to be much higher. The uh, Hazen Twist or Hazen Stationary building, uh, which was behind my store on uh, Third Avenue, uh, was supposed to be, I believe, six or eight stories high. Uh, so there was a lot of buildings that were shrunken when the, when the crash hit. One of the Drinkle blocks as well was supposed to be much more elaborate than it ended up being. Uh, as the money dried up, so did the construction. and. Uh, and a lot of fortunes were made prior to that. Uh, real estate was changing hands in the city at a phenomenal rate with inflation at every change. Uh, then once the crash hit, uh, there was a lot of people that lost everything in, in that downturn. And uh, I can also see that when I'm studying some of the old uh, photographers, because when I look through Henderson's directories, there was a big peak in about 1911, 1912, uh, of the number of photographers in town. And they were making a lot of their money from photographing buildings. Uh, back in those days, postcards were a big thing. They were used for handy communication back and forth. And uh, also because of the boom, uh, a lot of the uh, land promoters were looking for photographs to promote the prairies. So there was a, you know, money to be made in photography at that time. So there, there was a, a big influx at that time, and then it quickly dropped off after that. You mentioned uh, the Saskatoon City Hospital on, on Queen Street. A mm -hmm. uh, little bit of interesting history there. Uh, well, it started out, a uh, nurse started a, a small hospital out of her house, uh, and uh, I believe on about 25th Street. And it moved a couple times. Uh, it ended up... Uh, with the city taking it over, it was the first municipal hospital in Western Canada. And the city took it over and uh, since then it has evolved again in, in, in volume two. There is 
uh, a chronological series of photographs showing the change in, in City Hospital and it's not recognizable at all to what it used to be. And uh, same thing with St. Paul's Hospital oh, sure. on 20th Street. It started out in the house of the doctor. And uh, in the book there's a series of pictures that show how it changed from being his house with cows in front of it to a two-story building um, right up to where it is today. Um, and of course St. Paul's used to also graduate a lot of nurses every year but the nursing uh, school there has been closed for a number of years but it was also a big teaching center. Are you seeing some of the uh, the pockets around the city because this just isn't about downtown. You've no. been to almost every corner here. What uh, are you kind of looking at the way things have transitioned from some residential? We talked about downtown mm -hmm. had a lot of uh, automobile dealerships, which were basically parking lots with a small mm -hmm. building that have seen buildings right. take up that entire footprint. Uh, did you notice anything special about neighborhoods and residences with uh, how they were being built, the wartime homes and things like that over the years? Um, well, yes, again, downtown used to be a lot of residential and it's virtually gone from there. Uh, gas stations are another thing that have disappeared. There used to be a number of them downtown, now we're down to one. Um, so yes, not only has the buildings changed, but the, the whole composition of the city has changed. Uh, another interesting thing that I found out uh, down on the river between 19th Street and the Riverbank, uh, there was residences in there. Uh, Clinkskill, our first uh, mayor, his, he had a beautiful house there on the Riverbank. And uh, it was actually used as a uh, uh, officer's headquarters during the Royal Rebellion. And uh, there was also Knox Church was there. And uh, at one time we had what was called our Chinatown at that time, it used to be all along right. 19th Street. Uh, there was residences in there, there was a bottling plant in there. And it was revitalized earlier by the city and it became the home to the, uh, the arena which was, uh, and the uh, Legion uh, and the, the tech school mm -hmm. which became the Gather Cold Center. And now, of course, those are all gone, and that's where we have our art gallery and the Nutrient Center are on that block. So it's actually gone through three complete um, transformations in that time. And, and uh, it again hits me close to home because uh, when I was on the Planning Commission, we spent a lot of time working on developing the plan for that area. So it's really heartwarming now to see the fruition of it in the pictures in the book and the transition. You mentioned the arena, you know, in the 30s, I think, when it was constructed down on 19th, and now the resurgence to try and bring back an arena into the downtown, downtown. area, and again on a on a parking lot type of thing. So uh, I find it most interesting when we look at, you mentioned earlier that if it wasn't for the railway, a lot of the city uh, wouldn't have been established, right. and now we're looking at uh, building on where the railway was and, and the mm -hmm. rail yards. Uh, what do you think about that transition in the 60s when Midtown Plaza came in with some of the photos that you have here mm -hmm. where the rail yards were? Um, when the rail came, the, the two things that made Saskatchewan or made Saskatoon happen, firstly they had a lot of good promoters in the city who did wonderful job of the early Saskatoon fathers of promoting and building the city. Uh, but the, um, uh, the the transition also had a lot to do with getting the university here. Mm. There was a lot of uh, political backroom work done to get the university here. Without the university and without the uh, city becoming kind of a central railway hub, we would never have gotten to where we are now. And the change in downtown, uh, we have to go back quite a few years. I have a vague memory of the railway tracks downtown and the, the walking bridge that used to go across from First Avenue to 20th Street, which of course is long gone as well. Uh, but I think it's, it's something that really revitalized downtown by taking out the tracks and doing that, it's, uh, it's made it a 
totally different city. We look back further, I guess, uh, we, we hear stories about the SS Medicine Hat and how mm -hmm. some of the supplies were floated down the river and, mm -hmm. and that morphed into uh, the railways and now highway network that we see uh, with transportation. Uh, if you had any way to look back and share a message with the youth that might be watching, what would be a, a story that you would share with them in terms of what the city was and what it could be if you look back on all of the photos that you have here? That's a tough one. I'm not sure I could give you an answer to that. Um, the city, one thing you will find about Saskatoon that our present generation should be thankful of is the number of wide downtown streets we have. Uh, our early city fathers uh, did wonders with that, uh, which allows a lot of things to go on in downtown that wouldn't be able to happen otherwise. A lot of cities, their, their downtowns are so congested with very narrow streets, uh, we don't have that. So, uh, but as far as development downtown, uh, I know having had a business down here for many, many years, uh, the biggest complaint was the lack of parking. So every time I see a parking lot disappear, <laughs> it tugs a little bit. But, uh, you know, I think in general we've got a, a you know, our, our city has a lot of good guidance and I think we're, we're, uh, we're going to do well long into the future. Some of the sponsors that uh, I think you wanted to mention and mm -hmm. how to get one of these publications when they're fully released, can you share that with us? Sure. Uh, well, when I first started this, it was just a project for me, but uh, a lot of people wanted me to get it published, and I knew that would cost more money than I wanted to lay out. Uh, and I wanted to keep it done local where I had full control over it. So I started looking for sponsors to help defray the cost so I could keep the cost down to the public. And uh, so uh, Butler Buyers Insurance, Imagery, uh, Photography have come on board as well as uh, the Riversdale bid, uh, the Downtown Business Improvement District, the Broadway, and uh, uh, with their help financially, it's able to cover up the, the, the difference between what it'll be selling for and, and, uh, and what it's costing to print it. So uh, I'm hoping to have them in uh, places like the Western Development Museum gift store uh, and uh, McNally before the end of the month, hopefully by the middle of the month, they will be in there. Well, we'll watch for that. I want to thank you very, very much for all the work you've done in this, and uh, we'll look forward to having a couple of these on my shelf. Thank you, Randy. That's our show for today. I'd like to thank our guest, John Waddington, for shedding some light on Saskatoon's early photographic history, as well as the upcoming volumes of Saskatoon, A Century of Change. I'm your host, Randy Shavila. We'll see you next time on Connect.